Northern Red Oak, can you root them as a cutting? Yes, you can. The results are poor. The results are, I'm gonna use the word fickle. One tree will be successful and the other tree, forget it, it won't. Uh, it will also is fickle because of one year you can get away with it and the next year you try the same darn thing and it doesn't work. So, so put that aside. Can you grow them in tissue culture? Yes. Uh, am I set up to do that here? No. Um, I'm here because today grafting trees, I, I think the first red oak tree I ever grafted was in 1983. Today's 2022. So it, it can work. I mean, it, it's quite effective. Red Oak, I need to talk, I'm sorry, but I need to talk a little bit more about this particular species. Unlike, say, Corcus alba, white oak, or Macrocarpa, bur oak, or swamp white oak, Corcus bicolor. All of those are in the white oak group, one-year-old acorns, okay? In the red oak group, northern red oak being the example for today, they're in the section Lobate, L O B A. T-A-E, uh, subgenus of the genus Quercus, the oaks. They have, the Lobati group, has some well-earned well uh, notoriety when it comes to having compatibility issues. So some of us may be more familiar than I am in terms of certain species, for example, of prunus, for example, there are certain species you can put together and you can't put together other combinations because they don't work. Or, more importantly, they will work in the greenhouse. They'll grow well. They really will. They'll grow in your field after you, after you planted them in the, wherever in an orchard setting, and they'll grow for three years. Or they may grow for five years. And then on the sixth year, we'll say, the tree, instead of growing vigorously like it has been, putting on this much new growth every year, it puts on this much, and it flowers like crazy. And when it flowers like crazy, and you only have this much growth instead of that much, in a, in a red oak tree now, I'm jumping back here. What happens? What's going on? That's when you start looking very closely at the union between the cyan piece you started with, which we're going to talk about here in a minute, and the understock. And incompatibility has many manifestations. It is very hard to, I do not have, I've been at this a long time, I do not have a good understanding in this species as to why some fail and some do not. Usually the failure rate can be, depends on the year, depends on the clone. Clone meaning, you know, science source one versus science source two. Science source two uh, may have a failure rate of 30% at five years in the field, six years from a grafted tree in a greenhouse. That's, that's reality. Other trees, other clones, may not have a 30% failure rate, but they'll have something like 5%. So what? I can live with that. That's easy. Some of them, I won't say have zero. Some of them, you always have some issues post. You always have some, I'll use the word shrinkage, in terms of you start out with 100 trees and they all look beautiful, and then you know, come back in two years and you still have 100 trees. You know, you're always going to lose a couple. So, um, but... Red oak, northern, I call it red oak. Northern red oak is the best common name to use. Rubra is the best name of all to use, Quercus rubra. Uh, it does have a well-deserved reputation for compatibility issues. Other species in the same boat, shall we say, <coughs> excuse me, are uh, Quercus palustris, pin oak. Same thing. They have, they have failure rates which can preclude their use as a grafted tree in a landscape setting, for example. Uh, it, they just can't use them because the failure rate is too high. And you don't know they're going to die until six years after you put them, you sell them. And that's not a good thing. So, uh, so there you go. But in spite of all of that, producing Quercus rubra grafted trees, some of the oldest ones I have, as I mentioned before, uh, they're, I'm going to, I'm not trying not to exaggerate here, but the diameter of these DBH, diameter breast height of these trees, they're, they're at least this big. And they were grafted in by yours truly in 1983 or 1984. And so they, they do live a long time, but there is a definite shrinkage factor to be aware of. What are the tools of the trade we're going to use today? First and foremost is the knife. Um, this knife is, I've used the same one, back, what did I say, 1983, something like that? 
Uh, it's older than that. I've been using the same knife since this, I think this mid seventies, I think. It's this one. So uh, I am left-handed. Is that important? Oh my, is it ever important, okay? But I have two knives here. One's for a lefty, one's for a righty. Can I use a right-handed knife? Nope. I could, it won't go well. Uh, <laughs> it just doesn't. So be aware. Uh, the, ty the type of knives that I use, whether they're right-handed, left-handed, or the old one that I have down here, they're all manufactured in Germany by a company called Tina, T-I-N-A, uh, and they are the kind that you can cl collapse them like you can a, a jackknife, and um, there it's, it's Tina, T-I-N-A, 605. If you're going to do this for real in hardwood trees, because they're harder to cut, everybody, I mean, it's not as easy as cutting a pine tree where you can just slice it like through butter, okay? Some of these, especially chestnuts, they're very hard to cut. And oaks are not much easier. <laughs> so invest in a good knife and invest in a knife that it fits your tendency, your lefty, your righty, okay? So what else do we do? We talk about rubber bands, and I'll get to this in a little bit. Uh, no matter how well you, I, in this case, cut two pieces of wood to put them together to make a new tree. That union, that junction, if you will, okay, you have to bind it very closely together or else the whole effort will be lost, okay? And we'll get to that in a minute in terms of how you cut them and then how do you put them together to make sure that they result in what we want, a new tree, like we showed you examples of a little bit ago. So what else do we do? Um, here's, a, here's a product. I used to work at a nursery in Indiana. And we'll look at this a little bit later as well. These are, you know, so what? These are marking pens. Big deal. If you use a Sharpie that you buy in a stationery store or on Walmart or somewhere, and you, exp and you put it on a label like that, and you expect to see that number 2951 next spring after it goes outside, all winter long. Are you going to see that 2951? N-O. No. These, you can use the same story, which I, before we started this, use this to write out the labels. You write out the labels so you know how many you've done. Okay? So if I'm going to do six out of a bag, six labels. There you go. Always do one bag at a time. Just here to tell you. It, you, know, you. If you get confused and you don't know what you have, you throw the tree away. And that happens more than it needs to, frankly. This particular little orange um, uh, prop that I have in my hand right now, uh, when you write a label like this, they'll last for at least five years outdoors. It is worth your investment. Let's talk about the wood. When I say wood, I mean cyan wood, S-C-I-O-N, wood. It comes from the tree that we like. In this particular case, there's a number on here. I didn't make up the number. Someone just sent me this wood, and I'm doing it as a, as a favor for my for my colleagues, okay? And the number is 2951. It's on the label. I'm going to do six of them. Okay? There we go. What did I, when did I get the wood? Well, let's see. I got the wood from my colleague about a month ago. We're now in the middle of April, okay? What happened to the wood after I received it in a, in a cute little box? Um, what happened to it? First of all, when my colleague collected it from the tree, the source tree that we're interested in, the parent tree, if you will, um, the original Ortet, O-R-T-E-T, -E okay? The Ortet, the original tree, that is 2951. Um, he, had, he said, Mark, he said, what do you, how do you want me to send it to you? I said, Ziploc bag, no moisture, no nothing, put them in a bag and keep them before you ship them to me. You can ship them overnight, two or three, four days. It doesn't, this, in the middle of February, it's not a big deal. It's cold around here. And so you don't want them to freeze like a rock, but, but you, want them to, you, know, you want them to receive them fairly quickly. And then what did I do with them? Cute little bag. And I just put them in a the refrigerator above freezing, about 40 degrees Fahrenheit storage. So that's about as exciting as that gets. It's pretty easy. Now, what kind of wood do we use? And when I say what kind of wood, how old is it? Is it one year old, two year old, three year old? The older it is, the harder it is to cut. 
it's like cutting rocks if you get to two and three year old wood. So this is one year old wood. If I'm going to make any gains at all, it's going to be using the youngest wood I can. This is from the 2021 growing season. We're in 2022 now, spring. Okay, so that's what we use. So we have different diameters of the sticks, if you will. Guess what? We have different diameters of the rootstocks we're going to put them use as, as, the, as the root system for this grafted plant. So we try to match them up. Simple as that. The hardest thing in all the years I've done this, the hardest thing it is for me is to take this piece of this piece of wood right here, and I'm going to use that much, that part of it right where my finger is, okay? And try to imagine what that diameter is visually, okay? And then I look at my opportunities here in terms of understocks to use, and I try to, I never get it right. It seems like I never do, because I always cut this too, too skinny or too wide, and I cut that too skinny or too wide. You can make the, you know, it, it's just a challenge. It's, it's a thing with me. So anyway, some of them, like this one, that's pretty stout, okay? Am I gonna use those to make this stick right here to make the, the six graphs I'm gonna make? Probably not, I'm gonna throw it away. Because it's, it's, too, it's too thick, it's for me. Now, for you, it may work just fine. Maybe that's all you have. So you, you work with what you've got. Okay? So, but it's, it's rather stout in terms of its thickness. Harder to cut. Uh, and, this, and the understock that I have to work with, it, it, they may not match up at all. They may be too skinny. So, so you know, we, we have to be flexible in this business. So we've stored the seed. We've got the, excuse me, the sign wood came as it did. I've stored them in the refrigerator, essentially dry. You can put, if you want to, I suppose, you can put, um, you know, like a moist paper towel in the bottom of the bag. Some people do that and they, they just say, this is what you have to do. And I said, okay, fine. If that's what you have to do, then there you go. Uh, for me, no, don't care. Uh, so there's, that's it on signwood. And that's where there would be black walnuts or, or th that we showed you earlier today. Black walnuts, J. nigra, Juglans nigra, Castania melissima, or in this case, Quercus rubra, Northern Red Oak. S same, it is nothing magical about cyanwood collection. You collect it as cold on the day, it's as cold as it can be, okay? And then stick it in a Ziploc bag like we showed you, stick it in a fridge, send it to, in this case, send it to me, and I'll try to make something out of what you send to me. When you take a knife and you pull the knife through the cyan piece that we're interested in, trying to develop a new tree from, what happens to the cells that you just cut through? Well, the short answer is you kill them, okay? Where that, it, where that interface between the knife blade and the stick, the wood, you cut through a series of cell walls. You rupture the cell walls, those cells die. And what happens immediately, not next week, not this afternoon, Immediately, what happens to those cells that are immediately adjacent to the ones that you just killed? Usually they are parenchyma cells. And oh my goodness, they start going, <laughs> they have been stressed. They, are, they respire like crazy, okay? And so, but from those <laughs> cells, that cell layer, what you want to do, if you do it right, what you want to do is you're going to get to the point where these parenchyma cells are respiring very fast, okay? And if you give them a little bit of heat, like enough heat for red oak, which would be about 65 degrees Fahrenheit at night, that's the nighttime temperature, you should get them to respond in such a way that they will develop what we, I think we all know in this, in, in this story, you'll develop new cell division, very rapid, like within 10 days, very rapid, that you can see it very fast. Rapid cell division, and that cell division will produce this callus, C-A-L-L-U-S, callus formation, and between the stick you just cut, and oh yeah, remember, you also got to cut the understock, the rootstock as well. Same thing happens. Those cell layers that you you're ruptured, you kill those. But the immediately adjacent, the next cell layer over, 
That's what you want to, what's the word, stimulate for them to behave the way we want them to. Rapid respiration, rapid cell division in the cyan, in the cyan piece and in the stalk, root stalk. And across that callus form, callus bump, it's like if you cut yourself, have I done this? Um, it's like if you cut yourself with a graphic knife and you bleed all over the place, okay? And eventually, you'll put the Band-Aid on. Yes, I have Band-Aids over here. Uh, and uh, eventually, you'll staunch the flow of blood. And what will happen ultimately is that you'll get a, a little scab that'll develop where you just cut yourself. And that may take a couple of days or whatever. We're doing the same thing here. We're causing the scabbing to occur between the sign and the stalk. So that's how I think of it. And so when everything goes right, the callus formation develops, and then, next step, next step, what happens is the, the xylem and the phloem, the parenchyma, here comes a word, the parenchyma basically de-differentiates, okay? From parenchyma cells into, into xylem, uh, the, progenitors, if you will, and then flow them on, in the right orientation, assuming you put the two pieces of wood together in the right way, okay? And across that, ultimately, excuse me, but ultimately within the, oh, three weeks, two weeks, you'll have new vascular connectivity between the understock, the rootstock, and the cyan piece. That's what we try to achieve. And the faster we can do this, the better. Now, we have to get to the point of defining how do you cut the cyan piece in such a way that you can, can, can quote unquote connect it to the root stalk in a preconceived way of doing it, okay? And then you bind it all up, the, this piece and that piece together in such a fashion that there is, remember that I told you before about how when you run the knife, the knife, you run the knife through the piece, the cyan piece, the stock doesn't matter, and you run it through, and as you run it, as I, I do this, this is how I do it, okay? So this, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm visualizing what I'm doing here. Uh, could, just bear with me. Um, you, you cut and kill, rupture cell walls of a, of a layer of cells, and what you want to do is the ones immediately there, right, adjacent to that area you just killed, you want them to, you want to stimulate them quick, quick. And in order to do that, you had to do two things. Number one, you have to recognize that they do, remember this story? <laughs> they breathe because they've been injured or their neighbor was just killed, okay? The cells next door. And so they are stressed. So they have to breathe. But also what they have to do is you have to, you know, this is intuitive, I think. You have to, for them to, for these cells to do what we want them to do, you have to make sure that they're moist enough, that they have a moisture regime that will allow them to maintain their turgidity to make sure that they don't die. So we just want to kill the ones we run the knife through. We don't want to kill the ones next to it, okay? So some of this has to be timely, meaning when I get to actually not talking to you today about the mechanics of putting two pieces of wood together. But when I'm actually doing it, I don't waste a lot of time. I'm, I'm pretty fast. I, I try to be real fast, but sometimes it doesn't work the way I want it to. But I, I try to be quite quick because I want to make sure that those layers that I just cut, they don't dry out too much. So, and also keep in mind this story. So now for the breathing story, the respiration story, what we use, it's a tape. It is not sticky, okay? It's not sticky. It's also perforated. And ideally, each perforation, that's for a graft. There's another one. There's another one, okay? This is similar to what a lot of people know from laboratory experience, college or otherwise. Um, it's, it's identical, I think it's identical to parafilm which is used to wrap around the edges of Petri dishes back in the old days when I was a kid. Uh, and the same, same principle applies. It, it, it retains moisture, so they don't dry, the, the, cell walls don't dry, the cells don't dry out, but it also allows for, it, it is air permeable. So you can't use saran wrap. 
you have to have something that will do both. It will retain the water and allow for air permeability. So that's what we use. So it's very straightforward, very easy. One other thing, the rubber bands. Let's get to the rubber band story. It's the size of the rubber band, okay? These are pretty skinny. These are one-year-old root stalks of northern red oak, Quercus rubra, okay? They were bare root trees, okay? I got them from a local nursery here in Missouri, potted them up about, I think it's about a month ago, put them in the greenhouse, and when everything goes right, they start to grow because they're in a nice warm environment. They've had enough cold. They've been exposed to cold in coolers or wherever at the nursery before we ever got them. And when they get to this stage, that stage right there, that is perfect. Don't wait until the leaves are this big. It will not be perfect. So there's a timing thing. The rubber bands. Okay, they're called budding, B-U-D-D-I-N-G, budding bands. They are not round like an elastic band. They're just, they're just long. That's it. Um, there happens to be, um, this one happens to be this pink variety. But another thing about it is that it has, it, it has um, I think I'm right here. It has, it's, it's, to me, to my texture on my fingers, it has almost like a talcum powder on it. And so they're easier to hang on to when you're doing the wrapping story, which we'll get to in a bit, okay? So different sizes of, of these budding bands for different sizes of understock. If they're as big as my thumb, guess what? You don't use this because it doesn't have enough strength to, to hold the cut surfaces together. So you have to use bigger, stouter, sturdier budding bands. But for this, it works fine for us. So, okay, let's talk about, go back here. I think you can see this on this piece of sidewood, one year old from the 2021 growing season. We're now in April of 2022, okay? We have cute little lateral buds, and we have a terminal bud too. We can use terminal buds in, in oaks, by the way, if we have to. I usually don't, but you can if you have to. And notice also how they're very nicely spaced, a little bit space. Another bud space, etc. This is really good. Collecting sign wood like this from, this is, came from a young tree, can you guess? If you get it from a big, old, ugly tree, will the, will the sign would have these great spaces in between each bud? No. They'll be really short because they don't grow very much, okay? And they're a lot harder to cut for the purposes of our little activity today, okay? So this is really good. You can use, you can use uh, lateral buds. These are all vegetative buds. There's no flowers involved here. Okay, if you're gonna get flowers, more than likely, you may get some at the very base down here uh, in terms of the, um, the potential for um, catkins, for the pollen, uh, potentially. But for today's purposes, we're not even gonna worry about flowers. These all are gonna produce leaves. They're gonna produce cute little shoots and like, like that, okay? That's what we want. <laughs>